Hello everyone, Karen Glasser here. And Mel Greenberg. And welcome to Uncorked, life exposed in the most unexpected ways where what you see is not always what you get. So whether you're here live or on replay, make sure you say hi in the comments and tell us where you're watching from. Today we are talking about the empty nest. I love this topic and I know Mel, you love this topic as well. So let's talk a little bit about it. Let's intro it. Well, first of all, let's let's have a little cheers. Oh my start. goodness, I forgot yeah, we're drinking. It's, it's you know, it's Tuesday and we've got it. It's Tuesday. Oops, Yay. here we go. Okay. All there right. we go. What are you drinking this week? Oh, I'm drinking Prosecco. Um, La Marca Prosecco, and actually we have it in our kit. And what are you drinking? Because I know we have that in our kit as well. I'm drinking the Christian Salmon Sancerre, and it's it's the, you know, the um, Sauvignon Blanc of France, and I love it. Love it. It's love a nice it. one. It's a really nice price point, too. It's a good crisp, you know, in the desert, it's hot, and it's a nice, crisp, refreshing. It's wine. hot. I can love it. That. <laughs> Actually, we had thunderstorms yesterday, so it was. Um, we had was an incredible summer, and we missed the the monsoons. Are really my favorite time of year in the Arizona desert. And last year was pretty lackluster. This year made up for it. It's just been magnificent. So oh, and so and you just got back. You just got back from your trip and long trip, and it was every part, everything was, you wanted it to be. Four or five vacations in one, and it was just phenomenal. It was great. Um, interacting with people in such a different part of the country, right? Diff even different, there, you know, Florida is a huge state, so right, right, different parts of the state, very different. And, um, I will share just really quickly the highlight one of, for me, it was a highlight of the trip was visiting the Turtle Hospital in Marathon Key. And there's such a thing as a turtle it's hospital, thing, that's very cool. It's wow. the largest rescue in the country, and what they're the work that they're doing there, and you can adopt a turtle. It's only thirty five bucks a month. I love and, it, and um, and help them, and it, that was just I we my poor husband. I just drag him along on these adventures, <laughs> and he was a trooper. <laughs> I love that. How fun is that? How fun yes. is that? You know, so we're talking about the emptiness, and I know you like to say, and I agree with you, it's not a cliche. So, how would you describe the emptiness? What does that mean? You know, I think that, and I was thinking about this before we were going to get together here today, and largely the the dialogue is about women going through this, because we are typically right. the main caregivers right. of our children, and emotionally and financially, and what that means and what that looks like, um, but men go through it too, dramatically, and I really discovered that when doing the research for my book, Running With Our Eyes Closed, that culturally we really don't allow them to express themselves in the same way so it's about kind of redefining you've spent 18 years in right. one go mode right and rightfully so raising your children you right. know getting good humans to put out into the to the universe right. and then just poof you know poof. you're gone and when you get to that point where it's an empty house and it's just the two of you or um you you're figuring out maybe you were a stay at home Right. Parents, and now you're going to go back into the workforce. And there's, there's a lot of things. A to lot navigate. of layers. Really a lot of layers. A lot of yeah. layers. So we yeah. thought it would be fun, right, to do a Mel versus Karen um, <laughs> on the empty nest. Because as much as we are so alike, we are so different. And this is another another case of the empty nest. So when you think open nest, uh, empty nest, what, what do you think? <laughs> Um, I think of a, you know, just a change in everything, a different road. You know, we've kind of come to a fork in the road and the children are off happily so pursuing their their dreams and, and the next stage of their lives. And it's kind of, you know, I mean, when it happened to me, I, I sort of thought, well, I just lost my job of 25 or 20 years. And um what do I do now? Who am I? And and more importantly, who do I who do I want to be? <laughs> now, now in your case, in your case, your kids they you had the emptiness. They moved out, but they came back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, while well, one um, moved back to Tucson, but not with us. And then at the onset of COVID, 
my oldest son who works in the film industry and, and until this year lived in Hollywood mm -hmm. and his fiance, then fiance um, came over to, you know, just enjoy some time with family right? and Arizona and, and our small town is, it was, you know, a nice environment to, to be stuck and rather than their small apartment and um, they never left and uh, they came full time and then the then the real estate market went bizarre. Right. Unfortunately, we have a large home and plenty of room, and and we're all happily nesting together. And there's, um, you know, there are things to navigate, but it's a good circumstance. But it's right. different. It's not quite what I expected. We did, my husband and I kind of joke that, you know, we we're leaving a lot, so it's like that they're at home going, yay, the parents are gone. <laughs> you know, they're the ones stuck at home now in their lives, building their careers and raising their family. <laughs> And, and you just had a grandchild. And so it's not, so what is it like having, you know, Matthew and Heather, your kids and, and the baby, everybody's like there. What is that like? Well, I don't really know yet because literally they just had the baby. So right. Um, right. they, it's, it's, it's an evolution. Um, again, it's, I think at the bottom of it all, we have a deep respect for each other and each other's right. boundaries. And that's really important. And I think a lot of, children are coming home and, and, and kids that just went off to college, they right. didn't even get to enjoy their freshman year because they had to come home and learn from home. So to, the, to speak to those families as well, it's important that you establish boundaries and respect. And right. I mean, for me, I think it's, it's now it's, and, and thankfully it's been a slow right. uh, upgrade that, we are approaching each other as adults, not right. parent child. I'm right. not, I mean, I'm, I'll always be their parent, obviously, right. but their mother. And, and, but the other yeah. side of that is we are adults and it's respecting that, you know, I mean, my oldest son is almost, we well, just turned 29. So you've got a 30 year old, not a kid. Right. And so it's not, you know, pick up after yourself, do these things. You let them live their lives. And, and, and so far it's been, I'm going to knock on, you know, knock behind me, knock on wood, right. that it's been a, a pretty seamless um, right. shift. But I do joke because I built my whole, this whole next stage of my life on being an empty nest. I'm like, you guys are killing my brand. I know, killing the brand, which, and, and your other son lives, Dylan lives, doesn't live Very close. in the house, but he's, he's close to you as well. It, so, yeah, he's right? in Tucson and we see, and, and I got to tell you, we have family dinners, you know, at least once a week. Um, I love that. I totally week, love that. Everything. That's wonderful. It's, it's, um, we yeah. do have a good, we have a close family. Right. But yet, um, but I think that it stays close because we really are deeply respectful of each exactly. other's space. I don't assume anything. I don't right. assert, you know, I try and step back and I'll give my example of that is that Heather's family, Matthew's wife's family is here. Right. They don't live here. So the, them spending time with their grandchild is equally as important as me spending time, but exactly. I'm here. So I keep stepping back and, and enjoying stepping back and letting them, you know, have their space and, and, time with everything so i'm totally different i mean when when my son graduated high school um i was i was delighted that he moved out <laughs> um and we literally moved we moved the weekend after he moved did you out give him a forwarding address <laughs> we did give him a forwarding address oh, nice. i know when, when i say that i actually i actually laugh because um he really wanted to go have dorm life and he wanted to do all that i was like okay and but yeah. we had already bought a house and so we moved that weekend he graduated on a friday we moved in on a saturday and so he's been he's been gone ever since then. He's now he turned just or he's going to be thirty six this this next month, um, and you know he just got married. He he just moved here to the desert with his bride, um, and so I love having them close by, but not too close. You know, I'm not sure I could handle them being underfoot all the time. Um, and it's not that I don't love them, I do. I, I, I totally love them. And my oldest son um, just moved back from the East Coast and he lives um, in San Diego about a couple of hours away. And he's come to visit as well. And he stays here for a couple of days and, and then he goes home. And so it's it's interesting. And I don't, I don't know exactly where this comes from because I love kids. I've worked with kids all my life. I taught kids. I sang for kids. Different um, with yours, yeah. Right. But it was like, yeah, right. It wasn't mine. I could always give them back yeah. to, to parents. Your grandchildren. 
<laughs> exactly, exactly. But um, I felt I kind of felt like my job was done. Mm-hmm. I, I you know, raised good humans, as you said, and and sent them on their merry way. But I'm really thrilled that they do live close by. So when I need my fill, when I need my you know touch yeah. of Robert or or you know uh, Matthew, I'm able to get that. Yeah. But we are more than our kids. We are more than our kids, right? I mean, I yeah. know, I know you agree with that, and I know and it's important to remember thing. that, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, and in fact, with with them living in home, I've made it very clear I'm not their built-in babysitter right. because I work from home, I work at home, right? And that, you know, that and they're and they're of clear understanding with that. And you know, it's back to kind of just quickly on what you were saying. I, I, I will be happy when they move out. But with everything again, was a perfect storm as as much of this, right. this whole role has been the past couple of right. years. The real estate market went crazy. So it's overpriced. Right. You know, under inventoried. And and so the timing is, you know, we're grateful to be able to provide them an opportunity exactly. to wait and, and take advantage of that. I, exactly, and but you I know, do want them to move. I want them to move, you are, <laughs> but not too far away, right? Because you exactly. do want them close by. Yeah. You know, I know, I know. You, you said it was tricky for you because you, you at that point when the when the empty nest happened, you were a stay at home mom. Yeah. What happened? I mean, like all of a sudden, your job. <laughs> Everything. It's it. You really kind of question, and I do think that that women um, and men in the workplace question it too. It's like right. now what? Because even if you're, if well, if you're home, it's obvious you have a vacuous hole, right. and and you have some things to figure out. And if you were working, you still have there are there are logistics that change in your life. And you and then I do have friends that then question, should I have stayed at home? Did I make the right choices? Right. Because now now all I have is my work, and I could have had right. you both. And I think it's you know we juggle a lot of balls, and it's hard not to hit ourselves in the head with them. Um, it was a I struggled to to figure out what I wanted to do next, and I, I think that t- returning to what I had always known and loved, which was writing, was my saving grace, and, right. and it was the support of my husband, and, and we went through changes as a couple and got to mm-hmm. a point, and I think that's a big thing, too. It's about not more, it's less about getting back, like, oh, we have to be who we were Right. No. All along, you're not. I'm certainly not the person I was right. when I was 30 years old and got married. No, exactly. Nor is he. So you connect on who you are now, and it's a. It's almost like if you I agree. can embrace that and start a new relationship with each other. It's fun. Once right? you make it through everything else, it's awesome. Yeah. Not, it not that it struggles, but then like like anything else, when you get to the other side of of the light, it's pretty special. And I wasn't a stay-at-home mom. I, I have worked all my life by choice, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I traveled a lot and was always on the road. And in many respects, I think my husband was, even though he also, you know, worked outside of the house, he ended up being mom and dad sometimes because I was always all trying that, yeah. to do a show here or a show there. And I did have those thoughts at times. Maybe, you know, I should change my focus because, you you know, your kids are only with you a certain amount of time. But I think what my work really made me who I was. And if I had stopped doing that, um, I don't know what kind of mom I would have been. Um, so I think we do, obviously, what what yeah. works for us. And and I just continue to look for new opportunities. Um, and, you know, so as I move forward. Um, all these open opportunities opened up and I don't think I had the same amount of guilt anymore because the kids weren't there. Right. Okay. Do you find yourself drawn back to what you knew before or the new opportunities that are presenting themselves completely different? Completely. Well, I I think they build. I don't know if they're completely different because I have, I have stayed in my arena of, of doing, you know, what I do shows and being on the stage and that kind of stuff. And it's just kind of evolved into a live kind of setting mm-hmm. that we do these, these kind of shows. Um, and you mentioned about our partners and how that changed. Um, so I think I'll go first on this one because my husband and I, we were workaholics, totally workaholics. And when we did move to that new place, after the kid moved out, all we did was work harder. We did not work on our relationship. We just worked harder. Mm-hmm. And um, as that evolved, he ended up moving up north to take a, a, a 
bigger and better job up north and I stayed at home because my job, my, my cantorial job was still here and I had a contract. And it was interesting what I went through during that time because we only saw each other on the weekends and this went for two years. In the beginning, I remember saying, I don't know how I'm going to do this. How do, how do people have a long distance relationship? And then it was like, hmm, this isn't so bad because I was looking at like, well, you know what? I can do all these things and he's not there. And then all of a sudden it was, oh God, he's coming home. And at that point, I realized that this was we weren't in a good place and and this was this was already seven years into you know our, our youngest moving out and so I moved up north and promptly got divorced so it was interesting because we didn't do what I know now we should have done then but no you know no fear heart does make the the, the you know distance does make the heart grow fond, fonder and in fact we got back together we remarried each other and we're going strong but we work every day every day yeah. on our relationship because i know what we did wrong then yeah and i think that that's really true and i think that that and 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 we went through not the divorce part but the, the struggle and you make a choice you're like okay wait we are here we've done this together neither one of us are perfect mm -hmm. there are things we need to do differently are we willing to first of all Right. And, what are, and then what are we willing to do? And we do the same thing. And I think the biggest change has been really open communication. And, and, and it goes back to even with the kids, like saying, like respecting, like the vulnerability and, and hearing each other. And, and also, and like now we laugh because, you know, we're not 30. And, and when you're 60 and, and he's 64, um, you know, you don't hear as well. You get tired more quickly. So you can, if you can make light of it and have fun with life and where you are now, and enjoy that, it's 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 just so much more fun. And 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 again, like you did, you made a choice. And and right. It, and you know, it's always you easy to pick up a, Yeah, you no, and it's easy to pick up a shiny new penny. But but right. maybe the tarnished one, the colors, the vibrance comes through in them if you really turn right. it and hold it against the sun and it's pretty special exactly and you like to say that there are three parties in a marriage the mother mm -hmm. the father and yeah. the child right yeah and you yeah, have true. you literally created a book um you you actually followed this this dream and you did a you wrote a book uh, a award-winning book it's it's very very it's a bestseller uh and it's in it's in the kit guys <laughs> so Tell us a little bit about the book and how you basically took your story. It's not your story, I, I understand, but the story of Empty Nest and created this book. The characters. It was it was really born through the struggle of becoming an empty nester and the um, the couple, the characters evolved and kind of grew and, and developed their own way and talking and interviewing so many people and couples, those of whom worked through it and stayed together, others got divorced. Why? Interviewing separately females and their journey and men. And that, again, was the most intriguing aspect for me because I think our culture really focuses on the narrative for women mm -hmm. and appreciating what they go through and the changes and yada, yada. But, but men go through it. Fathers, you know, fathers who are part of their children's lives suffer a loss in a, and they're, right. they're not allowed to process it in the same way publicly. I don't think, and I think as a mother of two boys, I, I do take issue with that. We have to honor our male, right. our boys, and let them express their feelings and understand and share and those losses. So through that, it was kind of fun to to create characters. And then I was always in, in news. So writing fiction was a bit different and it was fun right. to be able like, Oh, I can make them do anything and, and be anyone they want to be. And Samantha's character is, was what really resonated and it turned it from a trilogy, which is what, how I had originally right. conceived the project to a series because her continual growth is what is so inspiring and intriguing because she's deeply flawed as we all are, you know, we're all just trying to figure it out. Right. At the end right. of the day, nobody right. has the answers and nobody's okay. holding all the cards and it's, you know, you just up, throw them up and figure out, you know, where they land and what to do next. And, and she kind of owns that. And I think that honestly is what resonated with her. And that's what keeps me in, in, in 
invested in the story because she's growing and until she's not growing, then, then it will be done. But she and that leads us and that leads us into what's next. I mean, that really does lead us into what's next. So you have you you're in the midst of a, of a new new book, right? You're you're mm-hmm. working on the newest book. I, so I have to ask, I mean, is it going to incorporate the fact that the kids came home or are you or you're not you're not going to put that piece in or is it just, it's Samantha's growth? It's Samantha's story. And she's a very, you know, I mean, obviously, as a, there's always pieces of you in, in what you write, right. but um, she's got a very different situation. And however, it, it does. Um, it is current. So the world at large right. is, is, is impacted and, and it is there. And I, and I actually held off. And, and rewrote a great deal of it because it just the time her timeline and when we pick up and, and catch up with her was such that that it needed to be addressed. It would have just been completely right. disingenuous to ignore what was happening in our world. Well, and, you know, I, I totally appreciate that. Um, I'm, I'm excited. So do do we have a dead, a date when the book is coming out? Um, no, no, no. Nope. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, you know, it's been 20 years, almost 20 years since my, my youngest moved out. Not, not quite, but almost. And as I said, a lot of opportunities opened up, but one of the biggest things that's changed in these, these past years is that um, I've gotten much more in tune with myself and I, in terms of what makes my heart sing rather than what the expectation is from the out outside and what steps have you take like how because we can all say that we're doing it but i love hearing and i think other people would love hearing how have you done that for yourself how how's that i've i've learned how to say no and it's so interesting that that little word those two letters n o um can change your life um i tended to be the one always that would a new opportunity would come and go yes and I would jump in and then go, oh, my yeah. God, I don't even know why I jumped into this. Right. And it continued. And I never learned my lesson in all of those years. And this past year, um, I had to really take a step back and look inside of me and say, OK, it goes through the filter at this point. Does that make me happy if I say yes? Or does it make give yeah. me a stomach ache or, you know, any of that kind of thing? I just it's a, like a, almost a body feel. And I learned how to say no. And so um, where I've been, you know, again, both of us are very fortunate. We have a lot of opportunities out there. We, we, we have the ability to say yes to a lot of things. And I'm, I've learned how to say no. And so, you know, for me, what's next? I am, as I said, I said no, but I am launching two new shows. <laughs> so, I'm so glad you brought that up. I was going to. It, this is so exciting, everybody. Listen up. <laughs> Tell so us. one of, one of the shows is called the Peak Stage, which is all about this time frame. You know mm-hmm. that we don't just all of a sudden get to a certain age and like right. die, or we retire and we go whoosh and, and it goes yeah. down. We keep reaching those peak stages, yes. and, and we're going to be talking to people that have made that, that have stories to tell, and because um, it's all about the stories, right? It's all yeah. about the stories. Everyone and has. I'm so excited about this show. It's connected with a, a, a company, and you you introduced me to these people, and I forever thank you for this. The company's called Vital C, and um, it's just it's just reaching your potential, your peak stage uh, in life, and doing that. So that's really exciting to me, and I'm just, I, that's just getting ready to launch right now, and I'm doing a business show. Um, but not, which I'm really excited about that as well. It's actually a show that I did back in 2012, um, when I was saying yes to everything and then said, no, I I can't do that anymore. But now that I'm looking very specifically at what do I want to do, this is an exciting show. And I have two other partners. That's the other thing I'm working with partners and you and I have partnered up on this show and that helps make my heart sing because I think what happens is if we feel alone, Mm -hmm. And we feel like it's only us and it, it doesn't do good for your psyche. It, it, at least for me, it doesn't do good for my psyche. So for me, I'm partnering up with people um, and just loving the collaboration and loving everything about that. And that makes my heart sing. So that's the second thing. I think find somebody that does what you do. Or, I or think that you said something that I really want to touch on that you, you learned how to say no. And I think... <laughs> Especially, sorry, especially women right. don't say no. 
we we say, you know, we, we want to be there for everybody. We want to be available and help and nurture and everything. So on one hand, we must learn to say no. And it, and I'm right there with you because finally I can I can say no. I can clear space around me. I can move people who are not positive in my life around and and uh, or ventures anything i don't have to be part of everything or part or friends with everyone it's okay but the other side of that the balance the yin and the yang is is the yes and being yes and at, at this stage in our life we can say yes to so many incredible and be open to what's out there and the possibilities right. and that's a yes so it's kind of yeah. learning how to balance those to balance the yes and the no. Mm -hmm. oh, totally, yeah. totally. Um, and and again, you know, because I've said no, it's opened up space in my life, mm -hmm. which allows me to say yes to the other things. Right. And, you know, as again, last year was wow. What can I for for everybody? For I mean, everybody. For everybody. Uh, for everybody. Uh, I, I don't think any of us are alone in saying this from a mental health perspective, from a physical health perspective, from all sorts of things. Last year was a I'd like to kick that year to the curb. I mean curb. it yeah. you know, and and you know, but it is what it is. And but it forced well, it so many silver linings, really, if you peel yeah. it back. I mean, so much good has come out of it. Absolutely. Because of who, how we're, you know, things that we're becoming aware of and how we're, I think, maybe more personal than, than right. culturally, but it's a good yeah, Absolutely. You know, um, I, we've, we've been asked already um, from people that are watching the shows, how can they follow us? Um, we both can be found on Instagram um, at Karen Glasser and at Mel G. Berg. We can also both be found on Twitter um, at Karen Glasser and at Greenberg underscore Mel. And um, whether you're watching the show on uh, YouTube or on Facebook or on Roku or on Amazon Live, um, we're, we're all we're all over we're everywhere. We're, we're everywhere. <laughs> get rid of us. <laughs> <laughs> we're everywhere. But if you want to just follow us on Facebook, it goes, just go check out my Facebook page, Karen Glasser Live, because the shows actually air there first, as well as on YouTube. So if you're impatient and want to watch it right away, go ahead over there and watch the shows over there because it will take us, you know, a second to upload it over to Roku and Amazon Live. But that's fun. I love having the shows there because you can sit on your couch and and yeah, watch the show on, on the big screen. Absolutely. We'd love to hear from you guys. We'd love to hear about okay. topics that you want us to cover, right? Um, we're doing things right now that we're, we know are, are, at least they speak to us. Um, and we have a great show coming up in September. So we're not excited gonna, I'm so September. excited about oh that one. That's, <laughs> we're even talking, we might be in the same room for this one. That would be awesome okay. if we can get that going. I would love to do that. Okay. But again, don't forget to check out the um, the kit that we put together. It, it has Mel's book in it. It has some games, uh, adult games that you can play with your significant others, your partners as this emptiness rolls out. It has some really great, uh, we have the Prosecco in there. We have the wine in there. We have wine glasses and outdoor stuff so that you can drink outdoors by the pool or wherever you're drinking. On um, a boat. <laughs> on a boat or on a, yes. I, that sounds like a uh, Dr. Seuss on a boat or on a um, <laughs> Right. So go check this out. It's bit.ly uh, forward slash uncork live. That's all caps. Go check it out. We're constantly adding new things to it. Um, and again, we'd love to hear from you. Mel, any last minute thoughts to our audience? I, I again, would love to hear from you. And I really, you can reach both of us through our, through our platforms privately. If, <laughs> You know, to, to further this conversation, because this is, you know, right. we kind of talk to all of us going through these different stages and there's so much else happening out there right now. And you spoke about mental health. And I just think you need to know that that no one's alone and that we're right. all out here for you. And if there's any way we can help or talk or right. exactly. connect, we'll love to do that. Just stay positive and, and balance a little. Yes. A little no. Good. A little wine. Wait, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> cheers, because the show is called Uncorked at, for, you know, after all. I want to thank everyone for joining us. You have a choice as to where you spend your time, and you chose to spend it with us today. And we are eternally grateful. So go out, give somebody an awesome day, and we'll see you on the next episode of Uncorked. See you later, everyone. Ciao.